Today, I'm excited to announce that Unity, this video sponsor, has just moved a whole bunch of their gaming services from closed beta to general availability or public access, so now you can use them. In this video, I'll explain what those different services are, how they work, and let you know which ones are going to matter for your game or which ones your boss is going to care that you know about. To get started with gaming services and follow along on your own, just go to dashboard.unity.com. Once you log in with your standard Unity account, you'll be able to see all of your existing projects and explore the services available. The first service I want to talk about I think applies to just about everybody, and that's authentication. If you have a game where you're saving any sort of state off remotely, or you're doing any sort of multiplayer stuff at all, you're definitely going to need authentication. In fact, if you're really going to use just about any of these features, any of these other service features, authentication is going to be an important part to implement first, so that you can tie all of the things back correctly to the specific user. The authentication system allows for anonymous authentication, so you can log in without having to set up an account at all if you want, but they also support the different SDKs for actual authentication systems that you would want to use. Things like Steam, Apple, Google, and what was the other one? Steam? Oh, Facebook. Implementing the third-party SDKs is extremely easy, and you can pull in whichever ones you want at whatever time you need. So you can start off with anonymous authentication, and then bring in Steam, Apple, or Google, or Facebook, whichever ones or one or ones you want, bring them all into your project without having to make it too complicated and allow Unity to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Once you've authenticated your user, you can let them get into any of the other Unity services. Now let's talk about some of those other services and which ones may or may not apply because again, authentication really applies to everybody. These services kind of split out depending on what it is you're building. If you're building a multiplayer game, then things like the lobby and netcode for game objects are going to be very important. If you're not, then we'll talk about some of the other things that will be important to both multiplayer and single player developers in just a moment. Let's start with the lobby system. The lobby system allows you to put together players and put them into matches. So you want to do some simple matchmaking and you want to allow them to create their own game, the lobby will do that for you. They actually have a full-fledged sample that shows you how to make a nice, pretty game UI for creating your own custom games. Imagine any multiplayer game that you've played before where you can hit create game, your game shows up in the list with a description, people can join and pop right in. The lobby system does all of that for you extremely easily. And again, they've got a great sample that makes it easy to get started with this. Once you've got your players into the lobby though and they've selected the game or the match that they want to join, now you've got to deal with connecting them and that's where the relay service comes in. The relay service allows you to connect players that might be behind some sort of network security, some firewall, or just in their local home network. Generally, when you try to connect players to each other, you've got one person that's the host, assuming that you're not doing a dedicated server. You've got one person that's the host and then multiple people that are the clients. And they need to be able to punch through or connect to that host. And to do that, we use something like a relay service. There are a couple of them out there. I'm really excited that Unity's finally got their own and they've really integrated it well with netcode for game objects and their lobby system. It's very easy to just add in the relay without having to write a whole bunch of extra code or complicate things. You select the relay service in netcode for game objects as your transport and it's almost automatically done for you. So what if you're building a single player game? Do any of these services matter? And if so, which ones should you take a look at? Well, the answer to that is yes, and I will share with you. The first one that I think can be very useful for a single player game developer is the cloud save functionality. If you want to save off the player's state and you want to not just have it be on their local system, you want to save it remotely, cloud save makes that extremely easy to do. There are a couple different scenarios where you might want to use something like cloud save, like allowing players to just switch between devices if you want to save off whatever their state is, their little character data, assuming that it's not too huge, you can easily just drop that into a key value pair in Cloud Save and pull that up on another system. And if you really want to prevent cheating, you can even go a step further and start implementing Cloud Code. Cloud Code will allow you to write your own code that runs on some web services or some remote services. It reminds me a lot of AWS Lambdas if you're familiar with them. You can write a little script and then have your game call against that remote code. This is great for doing things like keeping track of the server 
overtime, keeping track of whether or not players have used or redeemed something like a coupon. They actually have a couple really good examples with example source code in the cloud code documentation. I'll make sure to link those down below. But it seems like a very interesting way to do something that used to be quite a bit more difficult, and I'm pretty excited about it myself. If your game's a bit bigger and has things like inventory and an actual economy, maybe you've got player items that they can actually buy for real cash, then you're going to want to check out the economy system as well. The cloud save system allows you to do those key value pair savings, but the economy system is a full-fledged inventory purchasing and management system. So you can keep track of your players' items, make sure that they're not losing money, that everything is working right, and have a nice full built system around it instead of having to try to hack and build it all together yourself. The economy system allows you to create virtual currencies, use real money, and then create items that your players can buy with this real money or virtual currencies. It allows you to keep track of all this, again, without having to do it yourself and without having to keep all of the, the logs of which item belongs to which player. I've built that all myself before. Trust me, you don't want to do it. It's much easier when it's all put together for you and nicely wrapped up. These next two services are going to matter regardless of the type of game you're building, whether it's single player, multiplayer, as long as you've got a game that you want people to play and you're getting out there, then you're going to need at least one of these, but probably both of these services. The first one is analytics, and you might think, hey, analytics, that's not that exciting. It's just seeing some data about how much money my game is making or how many players I have in my game. That's the very boring part of the data. Now, well, it's exciting when you see the big numbers, but outside of that, it's the boring part of the data. Analytics is really useful for telling you what players are doing in your game and fixing problems in your game. If there are issues with your game, like most of your players quit at level one before they kill anything, or most of your players drop off at level three because there's some stupid bug there that you didn't realize, or some difficulty thing that you just didn't know was an issue, or maybe all of your players on Apple devices only quit on level two because there's some bug that only happens on iPhones. It's really important to get analytics into your game and it's really easy to do. You add a single call whenever you want to log something and then a lot of things are just kind of automatically logged and you can aggregate all of that data up into useful stuff without very much work. It's really easy to just drop in analytics, start logging out as much useful info as possible and then make some really good decisions off of this. All of the best companies that I know that make games really invest heavily in their analytics and making sure that they're doing things that their players both like and will continue to pay for. And I think that it's an important thing for you to put in your game as well, especially given how little work is involved in setting it up and how much the payoff can be. The last service ties in really well with analytics, but does a whole lot more than that as well. And that's the game override system. The game override system allows you to, as the name kind of implies, override different parts of your game dynamically so that your players can either get a different experience based on where they are. Maybe you've got an experience for the US, an experience for Europe, or maybe you're just randomizing it and doing an A-B test of the difficulty. Here's some players with difficulty A and here's some players with difficulty B. And then I'm going to put that out there and then allow my analytics data to come together, see which one makes players more engaged and then I can adjust my game with the game override system to just use the system or the difficulty that everybody prefers or the one that is most engaging or maybe the one that makes them buy the most in-app purchases whatever it is that your company really focuses on by the way if you use game overrides for something like this or you have a, some A-B testing, drop a comment down below. I'm kind of curious to see what types of things people use this for outside of all of the ideas that I have, because I'm sure you could probably inspire people as well with some of your, your really useful uses for this stuff. So you can modify not just the game design or the game content and the difficulty, but you can even swap out the economy here. So you can have different virtual items, different currencies, and everything else based off of this game override system. I think that it's extremely powerful. It's kind of the next level way above what remote config used to just provide. Now it's that plus a whole lot more. And I'm excited to start pulling this into my games and doing some analytics and A-B testing to see what it is people like and try to make things more fun. Because for me, making games, the coding part is easy. Making them fun and interesting is always quite a bit harder. So having tools to make that easier on me and make it so that I can actually be successful with it is extremely helpful.
Speaking of helpful, it'd be very helpful if you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and drop a comment down below after you click the link and go check out the services for yourself. Go try them out, experiment, and see which ones are going to be useful for you. All right, thanks again. Goodbye.